Hey everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. So this video is a snippet from my brand new Ableton Live Performance Basics course. I know a lot of you here on the channel have specifically purchased Ableton Live to run it with your Boss RC505s and RC300 looper pedals because you've seen some of my tutorials here on YouTube. So I want to provide you with some super high quality learning resources to teach you how to use Ableton Live from more of a live performance mindset as opposed to the traditional sort of tutorials that teach you how to record songs inside of the software. So if you want to learn more about how to run Ableton Live as a super powerful live performance tool, be sure to check out those links in the description down below and I hope you enjoy today's video. Thanks so much for all the support and thank you so much for watching. So now we've imported a few samples into Ableton Live. We're going to take a look inside of the clip view and we're going to explore a few of the settings. So you just double click on the clip you want to edit and it's going to open up a little bit of a menu like this and we can expand it out just by clicking and dragging up. We've got the waveform over here. So what normally happens by default when we import a sample into Ableton Live is it turns on this effect called warp and what warp does is it basically makes the audio clip quantize to the grid in Ableton Live so it's going to play in time with the tempo of our project. Now, most of the time, we're probably not going to want this to actually happen. And what I've noticed is, yes, you do get good results with it from time to time, but there are noticeable sort of artifacts and robotic clicks and glitches coming from the sample. It doesn't sound natural, so I prefer to turn it off. Now, we can turn it off over here just by clicking the warp button and we'll deactivate it. Now, you'll notice the timeline has disappeared from here and that's because the audio clip is no longer quantized to the grid. Now, when I turn it back on, you'll see how it locks in with the Ableton grid. Now, if you don't want to do this every single time, turning warp on and off every time you're importing your samples, you can change this setting in your preferences. So we are now in the preferences and we're going to go down to the record warp launch tab at the bottom here. And here we have auto warp long samples. You can turn this from on to off. Now, personally, I just leave it on because it's default and I'm happy with that. So let's close out of here and continue with our clip view settings. So also inside of clip view, we have a volume adjustment so we can change the clip gain so we can make it louder or we can make it quieter. And you can see how this is having an effect on the audio form to the right hand side of the screen. We can also transpose it. So for example, you can change the key of it by changing the semitone. So lower it by an octave, up it by an octave, whatever you want to do to make it match the key. Now I actually quite like using the transposition thing, especially if you're maybe doing a little bit of songwriting inside of Ableton Live and you've recorded some chord progression and things. You're like, oh, maybe it might sound better this chord being a, a B instead of an A. So you just literally transpose it up a few semitones and then you're like, oh yeah, that does work. And then you can actually record in the proper audio once you've mapped out your ideas. Definite pro there. So there you go. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that little teaser from my brand new Ableton Live performance course. If you did, be sure to check out the full course using the link in the description down below. I would highly appreciate it. It will help support the channel so we can continue making some epic videos. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.